Color is an element of art. It's what the eye sees when light bounces off of an object. It is another word for hue, which is a color's name. In the 18th century, Sir Isaac Newton organized the colors into a color wheel. We will be using the color wheel a lot in our next project. Because the colors have been organized into a color wheel, we can understand more about how to use them in our artwork, including how to mix them from just the three primary colors. The color wheel consists of three groups of colors, primary colors, secondary colors, and intermediate colors. Primary colors are used to mix all of the other colors and cannot be made by the mixing of other colors. You must have primary colors in order to make any color. Primary colors are placed equal distance apart on the color wheel. You will notice that there are three colors separating each of the primary colors. Red, yellow, and blue are the three primary colors. The first thing I want to review with you is good painting technique. To start with, you're going to work with a small paintbrush. You will take, dip your paintbrush in to your yellow. This comes straight out of the bottle. Remember with primary colors, they cannot be mixed from any other color. So we have to start with red, yellow, and blue. We're going to paint the top circle of our color wheel with the color yellow. When you work with paint, you want to make sure that you work slowly, precisely. You want to take long um, brush strokes. Um, if you paint quickly, it ends up being a little bit more choppy on the edges. Something that it took me a long time to figure out was not to treat my paintbrush like it was a pencil. If you press too hard and press it flat, you have a lot more bristles to try and control and it's a lot harder to control than if you were to just touch the tip of your brush against the surface of your paper. So again, the first thing we're going to do is outline the edge of our circle, and we want to try and stay in the lines, but today is also really about mixing the correct colors as well. Once you have it nicely outlined, then you're going to take your medium or large brush, and you are able to fill in the center a lot more quickly. Now that I have the yellow circle painted, I'm going to go ahead and move on to my uh, red circle. So I'm going to focus on the left hand of my color wheel because I'm right handed and this way I won't have to drag my hand through the paint. So I'm going to rinse out my brush really well and I'm going to dry it with a paper towel or on my newspaper so that way there's no extra water so I get a nice opaque or solid color and I'm going to go ahead I'm going to take a little bit of red and I'm going to repeat the same thing. Something else that can help you paint uh, more neatly is to watch the amount of paint that you put on your paintbrush. If you put a lot of paint on your paintbrush it's a lot harder to control. Again remember you want to go slowly outline. We're trying to stay within that guideline there. And we get our outline done first. Okay. Now I switch again to my next brush. I'm going to show you what it looks like when there's too much water in my brush. So you'll notice it's a lot more see-through and we want to avoid that. So if that happens, dry out your brush, take your brush, dip it back in the paint, and then paint over the top of it. You might have to let the area that has too much water dry before you give it a second coat.
Secondary colors are mixed by combining two primary colors. Their placement on the color wheel tells which colors can be used to mix it. You will notice each of the secondary colors are located in between two primary colors. So if you look at the color wheel, you'll notice in between the primary colors of yellow and red, you see the secondary color of orange. That is because the color yellow and red are mixed together to create orange. So if you look at the colors of yellow and blue, you will notice that both of those primary colors are used to make green, which is found in the middle of the two primary colors. If you are trying to figure out how to mix the color violet, you could look for the primary color on the right and on the left of it, which would tell you that you would need blue and red to make violet. So just to reiterate, the three secondary colors are orange, green, and violet. About half my yellow over there then I take and dab my paintbrush into the red it doesn't take very much and then I stir my paint around go ahead and continue to add some more red to make it a much darker orange and just a little bit more as you can see I have a lot more control by just adding a little bit of red at a time Okay, now that I have a good orange color, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to paint my triangle. The triangles on this worksheet represent secondary colors. So to make a secondary color, you have to have two primary colors. So for this orange, I have both primary colors of red and yellow. The next thing I need to do is I need to make my secondary color of green. So if I look again at my color wheel, I can see that the two closest primary colors, remember a secondary color is made by using two primary colors. So if I locate my green, if I look to one side, I see yellow. If I look to the other side, I see blue. That tells me what two colors I need to use to make my green. Knowing that my yellow is my lighter color, I'm gonna take and start with that color first. Now I've gotten some red in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and move some of my clean yellow into the other paint palette spot. I'm gonna take just a little bit of blue and I'm gonna mix it up with my yellow. Now you'll notice anytime you use yellow, it starts changing pretty quickly. Now this is starting to look like a good um, yellow green, but I'm gonna add just a little bit more blue so it looks more green than yellow. Intermediate colors are made by mixing a primary color with its neighboring secondary color. Please note that the name of the primary color always comes first. There are six intermediate colors, yellow-green, blue-green, blue-violet, red-violet, red-orange, and yellow-orange. If you wanted to know how to make yellow-orange, you would look to the two colors on either side of it. 
that would tell you that you would need the primary color of yellow mixed with the secondary color of orange to give you the intermediate color, also known as a tertiary color, of yellow-orange. If you wanted to make yellow-green, what two colors would you need? Well, just think about its name. You would take the primary color of yellow and mix it with green, which would give you yellow-green. Take and dab my paintbrush into the red. It doesn't take very much. And then I stir my paint around. As I'm working, I realize that I've created a good yellow orange. So this would be a nice color to use for my yellow orange color. So I can go ahead, actually I might need a little bit more red in there. But if you come across an intermediate color as you're trying to mix up your secondary color, feel free to take a moment and fill it in. Where this one is a little bit smaller space to work in, I'm just gonna stick with my small brush and I'm going to fill that in. Each color on your color wheel should be visibly different than the ones next to it. So to make my red orange, I'm gonna take a little bit of my orange, since I'm still planning on coming back and touching that up, I'm gonna take some more red and I'm going to mix it together. Now I want to be able to see a difference between my red and my orange. So this is getting pretty close. It might be a little too red, so I'm going to take a look. So this is pretty close to my red, so I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow, see if I can bring it back to being more of an orange. But you'll notice it's taking almost twice as much paint to mix back in with the yellow. So that's a better color, so I'm going to go ahead fill in that area now. In addition to the color groups, there are color schemes that we can use as artists to help give our artworks a certain mood or tone. Certain colors react in different ways when they are used in combination. The first color scheme that we are going to look at is a complementary color scheme. A complementary color scheme is formed by two colors that are directly across from each other on the color wheel. Red and green would be complementary colors. If you look at the color wheel, you'll see that they are directly opposite each other on the color wheel. Blue and orange would be a second set of complementary colors. Yellow and violet would also be complementary colors. The intermediate colors also have complementary colors. Take a look at red-orange. 
what would its complementary color be? If we look at the color wheel, it tells us that it would be blue-green. Take a look at red-violet. I want you to ask yourself, what would its complementary color be? Yellow-green would be the correct answer. Another color scheme is a monochromatic color scheme. I want you to take a moment and look at the word monochromatic. One way to remember this color scheme is mono means one and chroma means color. So a monochromatic color scheme uses one color on the color wheel and you create different values of that single color by adding black and white to it. To create a tint or a lighter value, white is added to the original color. To create a shade, black is added, which creates a darker color. The example that I have here for a monochromatic color scheme, you start with the color blue, you create tints of blue by adding white to create light blue, you create shades of blue to create dark blue, by adding black. Another example of a monochromatic color scheme could be light yellow, yellow, and dark yellow. You can create a monochromatic color scheme for any color on the color wheel. Analogous colors are a group of colors that are side by side on the color wheel. They share a color in common which makes them neighbors. For example, an analogous color scheme would include the colors of yellow, yellow-orange, orange, and red-orange. If you look at how the colors are made, they all include the color yellow. The colors of an analogous color scheme must be touching on the side of the color wheel. So for example, if we wanted to create an analogous color scheme with blue-violet, we could add the colors of violet, red-violet, and red. The common color among those four colors would be red. A warm color scheme is found by using the colors on the left half of the color wheel. These include the colors that we think of when we think of the sun, fire, and any warm items. These include any yellows, reds, and oranges. So yellow-orange could be a warm color. On the opposite side of the color wheel, you will find cool colors. A cool color scheme includes colors of the grass and sky. These are found on the right-hand side of the color wheel. These include blues, greens, and violets. So blue-violet would be an example of a cool color. Triadic color schemes are three colors that are equal distance apart on the color wheel and form an equilateral triangle. An example of a triadic color scheme would be yellow, blue, and red. You might remember that these three colors are also primary colors. So yellow, blue, and red are both triadic and primary. If we look at the color wheel and start with the color orange, what other two colors would make a triadic color scheme? The correct answer would be orange, green, and violet. These are also secondary colors. You can also create triadic color schemes with yellow-orange, red-violet, and blue-green, so you can make them using intermediate colors as well. Another triadic color group would be yellow-green, blue-violet, red-orange, yellow-orange, blue-green, red-violet. Neutral colors. These are colors that are not on the color wheel. Neutral colors include white, black, and gray, and you could also include brown in this group. 
When you add a neutral color to any color on the color wheel, it will change the value of that color. If you add white, it will make it lighter. Black will make it darker. Gray will make a tone of the color. Look at this painting and the ones in the next slide. Take a moment to describe them in terms of the color groups and color schemes. What color group or color scheme do you see in this artwork called Sunflowers by Vincent Van Gogh? Discuss this at your table and see if you can come up with a color scheme. What about this artwork by Alexander Calder? What color group best fits this painting? What colors belong in this color group or color scheme? You might notice that there are two color schemes being used to create this artwork. Take a moment to discuss as a table what color schemes best fit this artwork. Now take a look at this work by Andy Warhol. Do you recognize the color group being used in this artwork? How about this landscape by Camille Pissarro? Do you see a color scheme being used by the artist? If so, what would it be called? Finally, let's take a look at this artwork by Henry Matisse. Do you notice what color group or color scheme the artist is using to represent his wife in this painting? Discuss this one at your table. See if you can come up with a common color group or scheme that you think best fits this artwork. 